talking today about business intelligence via social media. Um, one of the most important statements that I've heard recently by a Greek was by Peter Economides, a uh, gentleman who took care of the Olympics and a lot of other great campaigns around the world. Uh, social psychology is far more important than economics. If people feel great about themselves, then they will do great things. And if a nation feels great about themselves, they will do great things, Peter Economides. I think there's a lot of importance to that. And I'm certainly that's been addressed today in a lot of what people have said. In terms of business intelligence gathered from social media data, I would say there's three uh, pillars, sort of definite pillars, uh, in terms of sophistication. The first pillar has to do with sort of just building lists and building ideas of who's into what and where they are and what I want to do. The second pillar has to do with insights, deriving from those lists actual insights and recommendations for a brand and what to do. And the third pillar has to do with communities. As has already been said earlier today, tools and organizations that can create on-the-fly communities are really the most trending uh, uh, phenomena in social right now. If you can produce a non-branded community that's relevant for a brand, that helps that brand target to its audience and get something done, that's probably one of the most relevant fruits of any kind of social media research. Friendly brands really are the ones that win. Uh, you know, to be in as a brand, you want to be inclusive. You're out if you're exclusive. You know, there's a lot of pareas in Greece. There's pareas where you feel welcome, there's pareas where you don't feel welcome. But I would say this, that there's more than one way to be a human. And really, honestly, to be social, you have to appreciate that. You have to appreciate difference with people. And certainly Greece is one of the most diverse, um, and certainly Athens, of course, one of the most diverse um, cities that I've ever been in in terms of lots of different kinds of people, different kinds of areas, different kinds of groups of people. So what we want to be in social, by the way, this is from my uh, business partner, Mike Ryan Solis in uh, Silicon Valley, uh, and an artist, Jess Three, who does some fantastic work. Uh, what we want to be in social is the white arrows, ideally. Now, the blue arrows, we have to understand we're never going to stop being the blue arrows. We're never going to stop being marketeers. We're never going to stop uh, being socialites. We're never going to stop putting out too much information. But ideally, in social, we are problem solvers. We are curators. We are in there providing a resource for people to help and to change and to do something new. In terms of deriving business intelligence, there's some fear about that. You know, there's all this monitoring going on. The U.S. government is spying people. There's this new sock puppet, you know, campaign that's going on by the government. What does it mean when we're doing social media intelligence gathering? Are we spying people? Are we finding something out about them? Is that not right? Is that not good? We have to get used to transparency. Transparency is part of being in a social environment. And honestly, moving from an environment of opacity to an environment of transparency really is one of the core ethoses of social media and of social media marketing and of social networking. New technologies have come into our world. Uh, real-time panels, real-time responses, um, on-the-fly community production, as we talked about earlier today. And certainly, uh, one of these technologies, I work with a company named People Browser in Silicon Valley, and People Browser has a tool where we can find the 1% that's gold, analyze the results we get, connect the community we find, and lead the conversations that we see, all on the fly, right now, right in this moment. And for community managers, that's a great, great option. As a community manager, I definitely want to be able to see what's happening right now in Twitter, for example, or in trending hashtags, or in Flickr or on YouTube. And then I want to be able to post right now about that. And when I have that option to post and respond to what's happening, I'm able to be a part of the conversation. I'm able to be relevant. I'm able to have um, resonance with what I'm saying. And that's certainly uh, a very important part of being social. The evolution of social analytics really has gone from a place of being sort of more um, left brain mind-oriented to being more tactile, more heart-based. Social is a heart-based environment. As I had this slide earlier here, um, at the center of this, we have benevolence. So, you know, Panos' excellent presentation earlier 
really demonstrates what it means to have a community that has heart, that's heart-based. So the center of it has to do with love. It has to do with something that people really are passionate about. Um, and so certainly, um, when we've gone into social analytics, when we've gone from traditional business intelligence uh, put together by organizations like Nielsen, Jupiter, uh, Gardner, these kinds of organizations, um, now we're deriving uh, deep data out of Facebook that's got a tactile kind of touchy-feely aspect to it. So uh, one of the golden fruits of that kind of work are infographics. Infographics that are uh, actionable, infographics that tie me into my community, infographics that pull me deeper into the social fabric of the internet. The Conversation Prism, another fantastic production by Solis and the Jeff 3 team, moves me deeper into lots of different communities. But now imagine this. Imagine if the Conversation Prism was an app. That's coming. Imagine if I could type in what I'm looking for in the center there in some fields, and that whole thing reorganizes itself real time and has data in terms of numbers, but also gives me some idea of what kind of an interest graph I want to be moving into for my brand. There's a lot of entry points into work with um, work with uh, our customer and work with our with our community. Uh, as this graph shows here, you know, when we're starting closer to the brand, we definitely have the people that are loyal, and as we're moving, moving out, we're moving more into um, the greater themes that are relevant to our brand. <laughs> now, uh, social media and social networks uh, are not just the Wild West. Uh, you know, that's, that's even more of a fundamentalist kind of location. Social networks are really like outer space. I mean, we're touching in uh, through these kinds of um, entry points into conversations and into um, communities that are talking about things in a language that not all of us understand. But all of us people buy products, and all of us people buy, buy groceries, and all of us people buy gas, right? So when we move into uh, a tool like this, we're able to move in, understand the language, and then adapt our messaging according to what we're hearing. Now, some people it feels like the kind of intelligence we're getting out of social media monitoring is sort of fluffy or sort of light or not deep, but I disagree. Because what we're discovering through these kinds of tools, once again, is the heart. And in a country like Greece, that's even more important. To me, I feel like Greece is one of the most human countries on the planet.